And we are back. Welcome back. Co airs with Christ this morning on the King's Report. 7 30 a.m. is the time right now. We are joined with Mr. Larry Pratt, uh, Director Emeritus of Gun Owners America, an incredible patriot, and of course, Gun Owners America being the only uncompromising gun lobby, folks. Everybody's got to be a member of Gun Owners of America. They are uncompromising, shall not be infringed, means what it says, and they are the ones that always are standing up for it, our rights, uh, living near and about Washington, D.C., uh, even though I'm sure they don't want to be there on that area for the sake of everybody else so that we can enjoy the great liberty and freedoms that we uh, enjoy in these United States of America. Mr. Pratt, so great to see you once again. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me with you. I really appreciate it. Well, we always are honored and appreciate to have such an incredible hero of the gun community. Uh, we are so privileged to be able to uh, speak with you this morning. And, you know, we were talking during a break. We, we saw an amazing, uh, uh, you know, video presentation and whole documentary uh, short uh, by Gunners America and, of course, your son, Eric, out on the streets in Washington protesting against the radical leftist gun grabbers. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, quite a, um, a juxtaposition, people who were very clueless about what it means to have a constitution, uh, a second amendment to protect our right to keep and bear arms. And I was just delighted that Eric and his team had the opportunity to do that because it really revealed uh, the, the cluelessness that so many on the left uh, operate with. Uh, th they were out there... To, uh, supposedly concerned about the people slaughtered in the P Parkland, Florida mass murder, they had no idea that I, a lot of them that they were there as pawns to oppose the Second Amendment, to oppose the Constitution, and it hasn't. I don't think it's really ever dawned on them if they're going to try to take away the guns from the American people, who's going to do that? I don't think mm. they are aware that a lot of police. A lot of the military simply would probably be sick that day that they got that order. They, they wouldn't be there to do that. And inevitably, if there were some left that did try to do that, I think it would light a match that would start a fire that would burn this country up. Well, it's so ironic about what they're, these leftists are doing. They're saying, we need to ban all guns. You saw some of the main speakers on the jumbotrons, the young students that are coming out that can't be, quote, criticized because they're, they're the second coming of Jesus. David Hogg is the second coming of Jesus. So you can't criticize him. You can't say anything about him. He's a perfect individual, um, even though he's promoted by CNN to be the spokesperson for his gun control now, and he's supposed to be uh, making our laws. Uh, but he's the holy and uh, holy uh, David Hogg. Uh, but it, these young kids are coming out there saying, we need to, they're going to give us an inch with the bump stock ban. And GOA has, of course, warned us about that for, for, for many, many months. We're going to take it a mile. They expose themselves for their hatred of America, hatred of liberty, hatred of the Second Amendment. And what's so ironical is that they're saying, okay, we want to disarm all law-abiding people and give all the guns to the very government that they say they hate because President Trump's in office, they want to give all the guns to Trump, Trump's government. <laughs> you, you talk about being clueless. That is exactly <laughs> the, um, the contradiction in their thinking. And I don't think they have any idea of what they would be getting into if they really were able to get uh, some in the police, some in the military, to act on what they're advocating. But frankly, I don't think uh, a lot, most of the police and most of the military would go for that because at the end of the day, the ones that I have talked to, the ones that we hear from at Gun Owners of America, they're not in for that. Uh, they understand the Constitution probably better than a lot of law professors in our universities. <laughs> Well, there's a wonderful article we covered this morning from the National Review. Uh, boy, see if you can pick that up real quick. National Review and how the Nazis used gun control. And when they unleashed the Night of the Broken Glass, what was it? Kristallnacht, is, is it in German? Kristallnacht. And they were, they, were, they were confiscating all the 
guns. Uh, Hitler, of course, ran that on his platform to keep everybody safe. And, of course, he disarmed the Jewish population. Um, and, and, and some of these leftists, I've seen interviews where some of these leftists thought, well, no, Hitler did not use gun control. Oh, and so you think the Jewish people had arms and they were able to fight back, huh? Okay, this is how, like, this is how unbelievably clueless the people on the left are. It's almost as if they're part of a cult. They want to call evangelical Christians members of cult members or anybody who, uh, you know, uh, are constitutional, you know, uh, uh, gun, uh, gun clinger, bitter clingers. They call these people as members of a cult, yet they don't understand that they are in a cult of mind control. They don't even know the stats. They don't even know the facts. They just believe talking points that are handed to them by Media Matters and the Democratic Party funded by George Soros. Unbelievable. They're like just regurgitating the same old talking points that are handed down to them from their slave holders. And even while some in the media say, you're, you're paranoid to suggest that uh, somebody wants to take away your guns. What uh, Eric Pratt saw at the mall uh, during that uh, gathering, which was a lot less, by the way, than the million plus that they were claiming, CBS <laughs> uh, television had retained a firm that does a digital analysis of photographs of crowd sizes. And they found that there at maximum was 230,000, which is a pretty respectable number, but it was no one million. That is for sure. And so we're, uh, we're told that there's this great outpouring. Well, if they want to see a great outpouring, come and try to take the guns from the American people. <laughs> that will show you an outpouring. <laughs> well, did you see what was interesting? Even MSNBC had to admit that only 10% of the crowd, which was, of course, as you say, about 200,000 people, only 10% were under the age of 18, and they were promoting this as, oh, all the high schoolers are all the march for our lives. Yeah. You know, all the high schools are on board with us. They all love, you know, the gun talking points, they all agree with David Hogg, even though we censor all of the other 3,000 students and don't let them on CNN, MSNBC, ABC, etc. We only let the ones that have complete anti-gun perspectives with FBI dads and those who work for CNN. My guess is that <laughs> many, many of those adults who were there at the march uh, were actually members of government <laughs> unions. Those are the most radical of the radical, <laughs> uh, they're, and they're a privileged class because uh, those who work for the government get paid more than the average American would ever imagine in his lifetime. Oh, yes. And those are the folks that were out there trying to, uh, if I had to guess, trying to uh, put a, a guarantee on their ability to dominate the American people by taking away our guns so that they can rule unfettered. It's the same old, same old. We've seen this picture so many times in the past. That's what I think was, was actually going on. That's what Eric saw with his own eyes when he and a group of uh, his friends went down there on the mall. Uh, these people were really kind of clueless as to what the right to keep and bear arms is all about. They had no idea what the history of it was and how the British were attempting to keep the Americans from having ammunition for their mm. muskets and their rifles. And here we have uh, a Democrat, uh, one of the leading Democrats in the House of Representatives, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, advocating bullet control. Uh, this, this takes <laughs> us right back to what the British were doing by trying to embargo the importation of ammunition into the colonies. These folks are so clueless, they have no idea that they're mirroring what had happened a couple of hundred years ago. They're, they're so unbelievable because they're standing on the wrong side of history. Mao Zedong said, all political power comes a barrel of a gun. And if, and if the citizens have guns, then they'll be pointing them at the Communist Party. I mean, this is one of the biggest genocidal yeah. mass murdering devils on the, in the history of the 21st century, murdering over 100 million yeah. poor Asian people. And this is, and on the left loves it. They froth at the mouth when they hear, oh yeah, let's all centralize the guns so that nobody can shoot back at the Communist Party. They all know what it's about they they know uh, th at least the leaders know now i'm pretty sure that most of the 
foot soldiers are as clueless as Eric found them <laughs> out on the mall. Because he did kind of like man on the street interviews, and it was kind of embarrassing how ignorant they were. But uh, obviously there are those who do understand that just as you say, if you don't get the guns out of the hands of the people, it's really hard to be a tyrant. What was so interesting, you know, they had all these drone camera shots and they were trying to hide because they were trying to make it look like there's millions of people there. And I could see like, even when the drone camera shot went up, you could look far back and you could see like the, the open streets. You can see how not filled up it was. And they, they didn't even do it in front of the Washington Monument, which I know is much bigger and that, that would, you know, that would be impressive if they could fill that. But they had to move it into another street, which was clearly apportioned off. They had barricades and they gathered everybody up, pushed them all up the front to make it seem bigger than it was. It was complete media propaganda stunt. <laughs> well, that, that's why it was so amazing that CBS had used this digital analysis firm. I forget <laughs> their exact name, but that's what they were doing was using uh, photographs that they actually took of the crowd size and then coming up with accurate counts of how many people were actually there. And their count, which admittedly is, is somewhat of an estimate, but they said it was an outside of 200,000, which again is, is a not insignificant number of people, but it's not the million they were claiming. Uh, it's uh, uh, ever since Farrakhan had the so-called million man march, which was hardly a million, uh, and the Park Service had estimated it at much less than that. Well, the Park Service has become politically correct and they won't even put out estimates now. But we amazingly, CBS television hired this firm to do an analysis from the air of the photographs that were being taken. And it's obvious that there weren't a million. There were like at most 200,000 people. Uh, again, not an insignificant number. But then if you're working for the government, you'll go do what uh, you're supposed to do, what the union tells you to do. And it was about as spontaneous as a lit match. Uh, and somebody struck that match, somebody <laughs> caused that to get started, and it certainly wasn't a, an outpouring of popular will. If you want to see a, an outpouring of popular will, try to take the guns of the American people. That will result in an outpouring of popular will. Well, did you see all those buses that were bus busing people in, clearly paid for by some organizing group? There's no way that people are spontaneously organizing no droves of buses to be bussed into uh, a, a certain event, uh, which, which Project Veritas has caught the De uh, Democratic Party saying that they bust people in to do voter fraud, for example. But you know they bust them in getting f funding from Soros, Open Society, some of the most radical leftists on the planet. And they literally were caught on camera with these humongous jumbo buses in lines and lines <laughs> delivering people. <laughs> uh, yeah, what spontaneity. What amazing spontaneity that was. No. <laughs> I think everybody woke up that day saying, you know, I'm going to drive my bus to the march. <laughs> it just happened. That's right. Uh, who would have thought? Uh, no, oh no uh, I, I think they've been exposed. And that's part of the problem that the left has had for a long time. They have the megabucks of people like George Soros, uh, no doubt about it. But that doesn't bring mass outpourings. The, the, we saw what a mass outpouring is. That was the election in which Donald Trump was elected in spite of all of the fake polls, in spite of all of the fake news. The American people came out and voted for the guy they were not supposed to vote for. <laughs> and now uh, Donald Trump is president of the United States, and the left really hasn't gotten over it because they, I think, believe most of them, their own polls, uh, their own fake news, and when the result wasn't what they knew was going to happen, uh, they still haven't been able to come to grips with the fact that they were wrong that the American people do not support them. The American people do not want to be pushed around by this elite, uh, primarily here in Washington, but also in uh, just about every government center uh, around our country. Uh, it's populated with people who think, I was born to govern and you were <laughs> born to be governed. Well, yeah, I think the message coming back is, no, nope, you got that wrong. 
Well, you know, what's so incredible is that it's the left that's been calling for violence. It's the left that's saying behead Trump with Kathy Griffin showing a beheaded head of Trump. I mean, the FBI, she should be in prison. That's crazy. That's totally threatening the president, the life of president. You have the people on the left twittering, you know, tweeting, saying things like assassinate Donald Trump, kill Trump, kill Trump. I mean, this was like they were the left was just exposing themselves and they were, they were actually crazed leftists that were shooting, you know, Justice Scalise and and, and, and or, or different, uh, you know, what was it at the baseball game? They were shooting at the Republicans. I mean, and then you have Jim Carrey, the Hollywood actor that's now drawing pictures of elephants impaling Donald Trump Jr. and Eric Trump on their tusks. I mean, this is a kind of violent leftist lunatics okay george cloney parading himself with you know uh you know uh fully automatic uh machine guns with silences on them in movies and yet coming out and paying to disarm and dis- repeal the second amendment this is how crazy these people are well the, the level of hypocrisy of the <laughs> left is pretty extraordinary because we had people with signs down on the mall saying ban them all ban all guns. Uh, so they were clearly not there to uh, memorialize the victims of the Parkland shooting uh, in a gun-free zone. And they were there on the mall, and you can easily find pictures of this online. Of there were They were there being protected by police, by uh, who knows what kind of federal police and D.C. police. They were being protected protected by men and women with guns. Bam! Say, <laughs> you know, it, it just, it's such a contradiction. But as I've uh, no doubt observed before, uh, without double standards, the left would not have any standards at all. <laughs> well, you know, it almost seems that this is backfiring. The, the NRA has having a blast in membership. Gun sales are going up. Did the GOA also, did you guys also feel yeah. a surge in member- membership? Uh, we have had our servers blowing up. Uh, it's <laughs> Praise <amazing>. God! <laughs> the, the increase in membership, the increase in people getting on our uh, email list at gunowners.org. Uh, there are people that are uh, so interested in getting information about what is happening in Washington, uh, what they can do about it, what are their legis- who are their legislators they can contact, uh, there's a, a renewed interest in uh, the people themselves being involved in the governing process. And I don't know if the left has this figured out because they don't seem to figure much out, but they have really awakened a giant that was asleep or at least drowsing. And uh, that giant is coming for the left. They're going to vote against them and throw them out. It seems as if President Trump, you know, you know his, his style of negotiation is he'll pretend like he's given the left something and he totally agrees with them. And you have, you have uh, um, Feinstein there, you know, rolling her fingertips and, oh, like the wicked Feinstein, witch. oh, ha, ha. You're like the Wicked Witch of the West. And you're just, oh, my God, yes, President, yes, Trump. You know, it's, it's incredible. And then he'll say something that seems to be as if he's leaning there, he wants to go there. And then he'll, the left will get all arrogant and they'll become so narcissistic and they'll just start going like, yes, we need to do a march and yes, let's call for the battle of the second man and yes, he's going to do it. Yes, we're going to have it. Yes. And then, and then it blows up in their face. I mean, President Trump's approval remains going up. The divide between yeah. those who are going to be active in the, in the midterm elections have dropped from 15% now to five within the margin of error, which means zero. Republicans are getting, or conservatives are getting activated. As you say, the sleeping giant is awakened. They've poked uh, us in the eye, and uh, not too surprising, many of us now are saying, I didn't like that. I'm going <laughs> to stop you from doing that. And I, I think that the normal expected election result after uh, a presidential election is that in the midterms following that the uh, president's party uh, has a setback in the Congress. Well, that could still happen. I, I, I don't know. I'm not a prophet. But right now, it would seem to me that the left has energized the base of the Republican Party of conservatives. And uh, we have uh, perceived that uh, these folks are, are not nice. They're not willing to play by the rules. 
uh, they make up the rules as they go along, and they're trying to impose their will on us and instead of observing and obeying the Constitution of the United States. And as a result, I think uh, uh, they have really overplayed their hand, and it's very possible that in the November elections, not only are they not going to make gains, they could very well suffer losses. Now, that's mm. we still have a long way to go uh, until November, and the Republicans are rightly known as the stupid party. Uh, but uh, I, I think that in spite of the, the Republican leadership, which is so cavil and which is so willing to go along with anything the left wants, I think that in spite of them, uh, the Republicans may well not suffer the kind of losses that they're expected to lose, but they could very well make some modest gains. It totally seems like if it's backfiring on the left in their arrogance and their frothing desire to really disarm the public because they are just like Mao Zedong. In the end, they're exposing themselves for the Maoists that they are. They want to disarm the public so that oh, yeah. it can be controlled. Yeah, you can't rule as a tyrant with uh, the people having arms. And th this is so clear as to what uh, is really going on. And there is, uh, with that march on the mall, there were many, many signs that said, ban all the guns, get all the guns. Oh, it was everywhere, everywhere, <clears throat> everywhere. Yes, yeah, get out of the bank. And so, and that's what Eric was seeing with his own eyes. He and the group that went down there with him uh, saw that, they photographed that. Uh, they put up that uh, video, which went viral. Oh, man, I think there's some 2 million views of that thing now. Um, they, uh, they really exposed themselves. And we don't have to uh, uh, make anything up. We've got the pictures. We saw it with our own eyes. And we've got the video, and it's there to see. I, I think the left has been so uh, busy, uh, out of their mind. Uh, they, they can't believe that, that they're not uh, being followed by the American people because they have thought for so long that they were the conscience of America. And it, it turns out that America is saying, shut up. Well, we have good news right here. Our Korean um, sanctuary church leader is saying that he has another 25 uh, uh, brothers and sisters from Korea that have joined lifetime memberships of GOA. So we're happy to, wow. hear, we're happy to report that to you guys. Um, That's amazing. We're, we're so happy because we believe, you know, this is a human right. It's a God-given right. This is not... This is not uh, this is not just for, uh, you know, one peoples or one race, etc. This is for all peoples. And no. it's in the scripture that the scripture shows us that for, we fight not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. And you can see these principalities and powers in the leftist party and the com really what they are, communists. And it's like when you even look at them, they're, they look totally dumbed down. They're complete cult members. You can see there's like the, the eyes and the soul has been sucked out of them. And it almost feels like there's the spirit of Satan that wants to oppress people, but he's using these people that maybe have been good, you know, well-minded in the beginning. But then he's using them almost like stormtroopers to try to bring about his will of taking complete dominion over all humanity when God himself says that he will allow his co-heirs with Christ to rule with the rod of iron and to bring justice, mercy, and peace to the world. They hate that. They hate the fact that in, you know, yeah. Revelation 20, the, the rod of iron brings fire. It brings fire from heaven. You know, it, it, it has tremendous power. It dashes the potter's vessel to pieces. It breaks wickedness and unrighteousness. They hate that because they know that Christ is describing a kingdom where the good citizens, the co-heirs of Christ, and he himself have the rule of the rod of iron, which is the dominion of the use of force. They want to monopolize the use of force. They want to use it against us to keep us as slaves. When Israel was under judgment, the Old Testament tells us in the, one of the books of Samuel, that they were disarmed and that there was not a mm. sword to be found in the land of Israel. No blacksmith was able to, to operate because he would have been able to make a sword. That was judgment, that they were uh, disarmed and the Philistines were able to mm. rule over them. So obviously being disarmed is to say, oh God, judge me, take away my Ooh. guns so that 
be Ooh. oppressed by a wicked people. Uh, that's what disarmament is all about. It's not a good thing. It says that's a judgment and that you're going to suffer punishment because God has lost his patience with your refusal to obey what the scripture plainly says, uh, that, that we're supposed to be armed. We're supposed to be able to govern ourselves. Luke 22, sell your cloak and buy a sword. Jesus said yeah. it. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's the doctrine that you find in the Old and the New Testament alike. And it's not that we're supposed to take our arms and go out and oppress other people. It's that we're to have our arms to retain our own independence, our freedom to worship God. That's what uh, being armed is all about. It's, it's a defensive, protective uh, tool to protect our ability to worship God as he would have us worship him rather than suffer the yoke of tyranny of a mm. godless people who would rule over us. Uh, it's amazing that the left is so convinced of their own righteousness <laughs> that they think without any justification they were born to rule and that you and I were born to be ruled. Sorry. What, are you uh, saying that know. Hollywood, with their pedophile cults and, and raping of women and, um, you know, a moral posturing and pretend charities and Satanist rituals and, you know, all that, they're not supposed to rule over us? They're not supposed to be our gods that we're supposed to worship and, and grovel to? <laughs> I think we, uh, in a way, we should give a vote of thanks to Harvey Weinstein because <laughs> his ugly corruption finally erupted into the public eye and people realized that the left is obsessed with sexual tyranny and that they want mm. to have dominance over women and to do over them whatever they want. And Harvey Weinstein uh, became the personification of this ugly view of the world. And I think they have really suffered a, a tremendous loss because we've been able to see the hypocrisy of the left saying, well, no, we're here to protect the little guy. No, well, actually, they're here to, to uh, uh, rule over and to uh, tyrannize uh, everybody, and particularly women. These well, are they're exploiting. People. They're exploiting the women. And then there's documentaries yeah. made how they're exploiting young children. They're bringing them into sex groups. You know, kids that are going out to become, what, stars in Hollywood, you know. And, and, and their handlers, their, their, what do they call them, their managers, are actually raping them. They got this guy on film. I showed it during service one time. They got this guy, Manny something. He's one of the top Hollywood managers. And he was on He's on camera and on audio saying, talking to this kid that he was raping since he was 11 years old. And he's on camera and he's, on, and he's still working powerful in Hollywood. He was representing Dis, you know, people for Disney. I mean, this guy is totally connected. And these guys are the ones that are, that are, that are in there. And this whole culture of hedonism and, and, and sexual perversion, it's interesting. You mentioned an incredible term, sexual tyranny. The Maoist, the uh, cultural revolution in China, <clears throat> the, whether you look at Stalin's uh, uh, revolution, what, the left is always selling sex because they're saying, oh, to the young people, hey, young people, we want to liberate you from the traditional confines of marriage and the marriage bed and Christianity, and we yeah. want you to bang whatever you want. We all, we love you, you know, we, we want you to have sex with whatever you want, have beasts, have animals, have children, whatever, it's all good, just vote for us. It's like they're using sexuality and the power of sexuality that God intended for the, the, the blessing of marriage and not yeah. to be a, an animal and, 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 and having with bestiality and all these kind of you know, uh, licentious, wicked things. It's almost as if less uses that to keep young people mesmerized, keep them hypersexualized, keep them completely uh, over-sexualized so they can't focus on anything else. They don't know who their enemies are, and they'll never be able to stand against their own oppressors. And then they set up a false dichotomy of communists on the left and fascists on the right. On the right, well, yes. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got news for them. Fascists are of the left. Fascists have the equally um, uh, uh, arrogant notion <clears throat> that they were born to rule just as the communists do. And, and they're really just a subset, uh, one of another. The, the communist and the fascist, are, uh, to the extent that they're ever uh, in conflict with each other, 
It's a civil war. It's an intramural. It's a fight within the same team. Uh, right. That, I think, is what we need to understand if we're going to be able to appreciate uh, the events that are going on right before us and that have been going on through the last century. Uh, their, their idea of a right-left um, conflict is totally false. Uh, it's simply a group of totalitarians on Team A versus totalitarian Team B. And meanwhile, the rest of us uh, that want to be uh, able to worship God and to uh, have a constitutional limited government, we're the ones that are depicted as being the, uh, the really bad guys and uh, the ones that are seeking to dominate other people. That is a very false narrative, and we've got to call them out. Uh, that is just simply not true. Well, they're the Nazis. This is what's so hilarious. They call everybody on Trump's side of the river comes to the Nazis. The Nazis were the National Socialist Party, you. and you have them glorifying socialism on the left. That's exactly right, and they have no clue about that. I was on Alan Combs' uh, radio show once after he left uh, the Hannity and Combs uh, TV show, and I got into this very discussion with him, and he was stunned that anybody would think that the uh, Nazis were not of the right. And I said, Alan, and just as you have just observed, Alan, the word Nazi is actually an acronym from the German for the German National Socialist Workers Party. <laughs> it has nothing to do with being on the right of limited government. Uh, these were as totalitarian under Hitler as they were under Stalin and Lenin. So please don't try to tell me that people of the right are the Nazis. That No, the people on the right are the ones that seek individual liberty, and we yes. are attempting to keep the yoke of tyranny from the left, be they fascist, Nazis, or communists. They're all the same when it comes down to it, because only a ruling class will be allowed uh, to have power, and all the rest of us will be told what to do. Sorry, Alan Combs and others on the left. That's just not the way it is. Amen, my Lord and Savior. I do. Thank you so much, Mr. Pratt, for joining us this morning. It, it, always an incredible pleasure to talk with you and to get that w those wisdom bombs. Folks, it's been an amazing day. I know Mr. Pratt's got to get running. He's very busy. Um, but we will hopefully see you very soon, Mr. Pratt. We love you. you. Love the work that you're doing. Please join GOA. Everybody's got to join GOA. They are the uncompromising uh, gun lobby on Washington. They're the only ones uh, literally in the world, okay, that's fighting for human rights. <laughs> I mean, for real human rights, where the Bible says, you know, the poor in spirit will inherit the kingdom of God. They will, they, you know, the people that have been always oppressed, the people that have been in the serf class, slave class, that have been in the, you know, the oppressed classes that never were have, have, the, have the right to bear arms, which is a God-given right. Mr. Pratt and his organization are the ones fighting for that right and it's, and it's not only in America, it's spreading worldwide. This idea, this idea is spreading worldwide. We are so grateful. We know God is moving so powerfully. Thank you so much, Mr. Pratt, for your work uh, that you're doing. We love you, and we'll see Thanks, all man. of you next time. 5 a.m. Shark King's Report. God bless God's speed, and may his kingdom come.